So if you're looking to manage all your websites, your database, your FTP server, your email server, and more, then you definitely want to learn more about cPanel. This is one of the most common control panel that a lot of the web hostings use. In fact, if you want to resell your own web hosting in the future, or if you want to simply manage multiple VM instance, then you want to install cPanel. cPanel has a 15-day trial that you can set up and learn how to use. After that, there are costs associated to it. In this video, I'll show you how to install cPanel on Google Cloud Platform. I'm also going to show you how to use some of the functions of cPanel, like creating a static website, creating a WordPress site, creating more users, and pointing your domain to your cPanel. If you find value in this tutorial, please don't forget to hit the like button. It helps this video reach more users who want to learn more about cPanel. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. I have a lot of videos about Google Cloud Platform and how-to tutorials on Macs. It's showtime. So what we want to do is go to our Google Cloud Platform, go to the top left menu, and go to Marketplace. And then in the search menu, type cPanel. Then select cPanel here, which has the cPanel logo. Then click Launch. There's going to be a few things we're going to configure here. For a deployment name, you can name it to whatever you want. For zone, you want to set it to the closest zone to you or the user. For CPU, it's good to have two CPU at least, but you can add more if you want. I recommend adding more memory, more than two gigs, but keep in mind the cost will also increase. So in this example, I'm just going to set it to two gigs for now. The other thing you want to set is your boot disk set it as SSD. That will also increase by another $2 there. And for boot disk, I'm just going to leave it at 40 gigs, but you can always increase this later on. For network details, I prefer to set the static IP now, but it looks like we can't. So we're going to do that later on. On the bottom over here, you'll see all the firewall ports. Leave this all checked. And then all the way in the bottom, click deploy. I'm going to fast forward this part. This would take a few minutes. This is now configured. You can see the IP address that we have here. And the next thing we want to do is go to our SSH. Click on that. Then we're going to change the password on root. So type sudo pass wd and root. And then now enter the password that you want. For password, you need to be secure. You can't use any words from the dictionary. It will actually give you a warning message when you use that. Now we're ready to log into our WHM. So type sudo WHM login. It will give you the link to our WHM. So hover over your mouse and then click it. Then it gives you the user agreement. So click on that, read through it, and then agree to all. Then we need to activate this using our cPanel license. So if you don't have a license yet, go to cPanel.net and get your license. If you click login here, it will ask you for your cPanel login, but you can easily create an account from here, enter your email address, and then agree to the terms of use, and then create an account. I already created my account, so I'm just going to click sign in now, and I'm going to put my username and password, and then click sign in, and then it's going to activate your trial license. Our license is now activated. We can now click server setup. For email address, put in your email address here. And for name servers, leave it to the way it is. Now click finish. So once you're ready to buy your license for cPanel, click on purchase a license here. But the next thing we want to do is create a new account. And here's where we're going to add our domain. So from our domain, we're going to use my keynotedex.com and then username. You can set it to whatever username you want. And password, ensure that you have a really strong password. And then add your email. For package, choose a package here. There's only one available, which is the default. And then next, scroll all the way down. Look for DNS settings. We're going to use my current domain's DNS settings, which is under Google Domains. Now, the other thing that you might want to set if you are setting it for a reseller is this make a reseller account. Okay, that's all the settings we need. Now click the Create button. The account should be created. 
All you have to do now is go to cPanel. And that is it. We have our cPanel. It has been created. You can create multiple accounts and multiple cPanel. So a few things I want to show you about cPanel. If you want to manage your files instead of using FTP, you want to click on File Manager. And from here, you can upload files directly from www and create multiple folders. If you want to create a backup of all your websites, if you have multiple websites on your cPanel, you can click Backup over here. This is where you can download a full backup of your cPanel as well as restore a backup. If you want to use Git so you have a version control system, you can also use the Git version control over here and then you can create multiple Git repositories. If you want to manage your database, you can easily log into your PHP MyAdmin over here. You can import or export your database over here or modify your database. If you want to add more users to this specific cPanel, you can click the button over here or scroll all the way down and look for User Manager. To add a user, click Add User. Then put a full name, username, and the domain that you want this user to have access to as well as a contact email address. You can set a password or let the user set up a password. You can also add an email for this specific user. I personally prefer not using cPanel's email feature. I prefer to manage my email control panel using Google's Workplace or Office 365. This way you can always access your email admin if your cPanel goes down. Now click the Create button and that should create our user account for cPanel. Now since we didn't create a password for that user, it will email an invitation to that specific user. You'll notice the FTP user over here. Now that's not turned on by default on cPanel. If you look in their files, there's no FTP over here. Now let's go back to our WHM. Click on the menu, search for FTP, and then select FTP server selection. Over here you have Pro FTP and Pure FTPD. There are more disadvantages on Pro FTPD, so we're going to use Pure FTP instead. So we're done, click Save, and that should install FTP to our cPanel. Now if we go back to cPanel and refresh that page, we should now see FTP accounts over here. So if you want to create an FTP account access only as opposed to cPanel access, this is where you want to create that user. So I'm going to put FTP over here and then create a password. Actually, I remember now FTP has already been created, so I'm going to put FTP007. Then scroll down and you should see Create FTP Account. To access the FTP, if you scroll down, you should see Cyberduck FTP Configuration for Mac and Core FTP for Windows. And if you click one of them, you should see further instructions on how to connect to FTP. So the next thing I want to show you are domains. So scroll down over here, you should see domains. You can add multiple domains here that you want to manage. All you have to do is create a new domain on the right. Currently, I just have keynotedex.com here. You can also manage a subdomain. So if you go back over here, you should see subdomains. And for subdomains, we can try a staging website. Then it will create a folder under document root. And then all you have to do is click the create button. Now, if you created a subdomain, what you want to do is create an A record onto your domain registrar. So copy your shared IP address and go to your domain registrar. On my case, it's Google Domains. Modify the DNS settings. Then add an A record by putting the subdomain under the name. I'm going to put stage over here. Leave that as A record. Leave it as one hour. And then put the IP address on this field. Then click Add. And then after that, you just have to wait a few hours or up to 48 hours for it to take effect. While we're waiting for it to take effect, we can now create a website. So let's go back to our cPanel, scroll down, and look for Site Publisher. And over here, we should see our subdomain. Select that. And we have multiple templates here that we can choose from. I'm just going to pick the first template as an example. And then you can put your name here, your tagline, an image URL and select the template color and what other things you want to add. So I'm just going to quickly modify this. 
You can also add an email address there, your Facebook link, and other social media stuff, as well as Google Analytics. So now we're ready to publish, and we can test if our domain has propagated. And it gives you this warning because it's currently pointing to HTTPS and SSL hasn't taken effect. And then if we click Advance and Continue, we can see that our website is now up. So this is a quick static website that you can create. It's something you can use for your resume or a simple business website. Next, I want to show you how to create a WordPress website. So let's go back to our cPanel, scroll down and look for software or application. Now, depending on which version is installed, sometimes it's called application or sometimes it's called software. Now, I do know that WordPress is not installed. To confirm that, let's go to our WHM, search for software, and then look for install CP add-on site software. In here, you can see all the software that you can add on. One of them is WordPress over here. You can add PHBB as well. And always commerce if you want to create an e-commerce website later on. Once you're satisfied with all your selection, click update. And it will now install all those applications onto your cPanel. Now let's go back to our cPanel, refresh the page, then click Site Software. As you can see, we have all the software that we just installed. Before we set this up, let's go back to our subdomain and create a subdomain for our WordPress website. I'm going to make this simple, so I'm just going to type WP, and then it's going to be wp.keynotedex.com. Click Create. Now we can add WordPress on this, so go to our cPanel and click on Site Software. Pick WordPress. Now let's pick where we want to install it. So under Installation URL, pick your subdomain. Take off any folder there, otherwise it will install it to that folder. And then put the admin user. I'm just going to put admin007 and set the password that you want. And below that, add an email address as well. For blog name and blog description, you can pretty much do this under WordPress once you're logged in. Table prefix, you can leave it to whatever it's set it as, and we definitely want to create a new database. Then after that, click Install. After the installation, it should give you your username and password. The next thing we want to do is point the IP address to our subdomain. Copy this IP address again, and then go to our domain registrar. And similar to the A record on our stage subdomain that we created, we're going to do exactly the same thing on that, except change the name to WP. Similar to stage, we have to wait up to 48 hours for it to propagate. So we waited a few hours, we can finally test our WordPress website. So I'm going to launch it. That's working. Now we can log into our admin panel. That's also working. The next thing you want to do is make sure WordPress is up to date as well as all your plugins. Now, if you want to learn how to create your own media center using Google Cloud Platform, here's my tutorial on that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something here. Leave a comment below if you have any questions.